obviously, of course, like I said last week, I won the first ever Friday Night War. So put 60 seconds on the clock. I'm going to give my victory speech. It comes as no surprise that I won the first ever Friday Night War. I just want to take a moment to say, Joe, you gave a good effort, but you just came up short, just like the Raiders every year. High expectations leads to large levels of disappointment, which is why I have the stage now to say whatever I want. So I'm going to take my 60 seconds to do something good. Recently, I had a guest on my show named Jennifer Cobb. She's an ex-LA Rams cheerleader who now heads an organization called Team Getaway to a Cure, an organization that is working endlessly to cure slash help victims of brain disease of multiple kinds. So you can go and donate to the organization and help those in need by heading to Team Gateway to a Cure.com. Once again, Team Gateway to a Cure.com. My grandfather suffered from brain cancer, so it would mean a lot to me if y'all can head over there and even donate $5, $1, 30 cents, whatever you can afford. All that's left to say, man, is cheers to the Lakers, cheers to the Dodgers, and cheers to you, Joe Morley. <laughs> all right i'll give you that one i'll give you week one but uh i'm coming today i'm coming today be ready <laughs> take it in because it's probably the only victory you're gonna get <laughs> you know after this straight domination straight domination because i'm ready oh the nerves got to you right i'm used to having a debate style show i had a debate style show before the nerves got to you like any raiders fan the nerves got to you See, I, I thought you were going to say that I was like Kershaw in the seventh inning of the playoffs, <laughs> you know, something like that, that I, I was good and then laid it at the end. But no, no, you can you can talk about the Raiders all you want, but it's cool. It's cool. With your <laughs> Bring, that heat. Bring that heat, Joe. <laughs> all right, guys, let's go to war. Who is the better rookie quarterback? Joe Burrow or Justin Herbert? All right, wasting no time, I am back again for this first topic. And the answer is obvious. Justin Herbert, to this point in the season, is no doubt the better quarterback out of these two. It's more than just numbers, but let's take a little peek at the flat-out stats for a second. Justin Herbert, in four games, has a 68% completion percentage and 1,195 yards. 1,200 yards, basically, Joe. Nine touchdowns, three interceptions, with one rushing touchdown as well. So 10 touchdowns in his first four games of his career. He has more yards in four games than guys like Lamar Jackson and Baker Mayfield have in six games. He has more TDs in four games than guys like Phillip Rivers. Having fun over there, Phil? Let me know if you're having a good time. Teddy Bridgewater, Carson Wentz, Daniel Jones, and Joe Burrow himself in six games. So Joe Burrow has put up more numbers in four games than these guys in six games. So what category is Burrow beating Herbie in? Joe has more yards than Justin Herbert. That's it. That's it. Herbert has a higher completion percentage. Herbert has a higher passer rating. Herbert has more touchdowns passing, less interceptions thrown in two less games than Joe Burrow with zero prep time and some tough opponents. He also... You know, he's very good with his footwork. He's good with his eyes down the field. He shows an ability to hit wide receivers in the correct spots. Herbert will win the Offensive Rookie of the Year in 2020, and the Chargers will have a better record than the Bengals. Burrow for sure. Joe Burr, I'll take Joe Burrow over Justin Herbert all day. Let's not – let me remind you of something, Mike. Let me remind you of something. Joe Burrow was the number one overall pick. Remember that. Number one overall pick, five picks before Mr. Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert was a third quarterback taken off the board. That's what the whole NFL thinks about him, right? So right off the back, right off the back, you know, he had a ton of pressure on him. Then he, had, he went to the Bengals. The Bengals of all teams, he had to go play for the Bengals. And you thought he had a great running back, right? And then, you know, we haven't seen Joe Mixon. Have you seen Joe Mixon this year? I haven't. So he goes over there. He has that awful offensive line, and he's still putting up great stats. Still putting up great stats. Four 300-yard games, four of them so far. That doesn't mean not much, but it shows that he's still doing what he's doing. You saw what Dak does when you, the Cowboys do when Dak's gone because your team's still crappy. So he's putting up stats. He's been doing four times. You know, he keeps running around, and he's not afraid to take the big hits. He's thrown 12 passes this year that have been dropped dropped he's the main factor the Bengals are in some of these games he's brought life to that offense and he's you know he's running for his life he has to stay healthy and you know 
the Burrow, he's going to go to the playoffs with the Bengals this year. Not not this year, but he'll go with the Bengals. He'll take the Bengals to the playoffs. All right, Joe. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Basically, you just made an argument for Joe Burrow, but all you had to do was erase Joe Burrow's name from the argument and insert Justin Herbert. He hasn't had an offensive line. He hasn't had a running back all season. He has had struggling receivers because they've all been injured. He's had a struggling defense. He's put up bigger numbers. I'm just saying, Joe. But he, but Herbert doesn't have Zach Taylor as a coach. <laughs> you know what I mean? Come on. You put him in the Bengals, the worst organization, and this, this dude is putting up numbers. Putting up numbers. Do you know who Jalen Guyton is? Do you know who Byron Johnson is? These are his wide receiver two and wide receiver threes on the Chargers on Monday Night Football versus New Orleans Saints, and you saw what he did with them. One game. He still had Mike (laughs) Williams. Hunter Henry, Keenan Allen. I've seen those guys on the field with them. Yeah, they were injured. They've been injured, and they'll (laughs) stay injured, and they'll keep getting injured. And Justin Joe Burrow's favorite. Keep carrying us to almost winning games. (laughs) Joe Burrow's favorite wide receiver, T. Higgins. (laughs) <laughs> i like it all right guys go ahead and vote who you think won this round maybe you're voting for which quarterback's better or you're voting for which one of us gave the better argument which nfl team is the worst in the nfl the worst team in the nfl come on mike it's not, it's hard to pick there's a lot of bad teams out there right i you know I, I usually like to pick on my friend Brando, who loves the Jaguars, and I like to pick on the Jags, but that's too easy. I could see the Jets, too easy. Maybe the Vikings? Nah, I want to go with the worst team. The worst team in the National Football League right now, the Dallas Cowboys. You know, talent-wise, talent-wise, good. Because we know what they have, but just overall as a team, they aren't putting it together. Their fans suck. Their defense is something else. Probably one of the worst defense we've ever seen, right? Now with Dak Prescott's off, you know, out, they're only going to get worse. Prescott kept them in games, and he made the plays. Dalton isn't Dak Prescott. Andy Dalton is nowhere near Dak Prescott, and Dak Prescott, is his, his money is going up while, Dak, while Andy Dalton is playing on the field, right? The Dallas Cowboys – are even coming out and talking about their own coaching, talking about how they can't coach. They don't even know how to do their job. The team looks like they have absolutely no leadership, and they're going in the hole quickly. Lots of injuries, yes, but next man up. At this point, I'd rather have Adam Gase coaching my team than Mike McCarthy. Now, you have to wonder who was really coaching the Packers all these years, McCarthy or Aaron Rodgers, right? Well, a huge pet peeve of mine is I never like to say or predict a team is going to go 0-16 or even 1-15. It just doesn't happen. The NFL is too competitive. Even the worst teams pull off three, four wins at, at the most. Typically, if someone predicts a team to go 0-16 at the beginning of the season or even at this point in the season, I discredit their opinion just because it doesn't happen. It's very rare. Until this year, and the Jets of 2020 came into existence. I witnessed Joe Flacco. Yes, Joe Flacco try to evade a sack by running 20 yards backwards just to get sacked anyways. That convinced me. Right then and there, I changed my mind. If you, if you hear me complaining about someone saying that a team can go 0-16 ever again, cite the 2020 Jets because they possibly could do it. The Jets' point differential is negative 110. That is historically bad. Their starting quarterback plays hard. I love Darnold the tenth, but it's just too much to overcome. He has no wide receivers, no running backs, no tight ends, no defense, no coach, nothing. He has nothing around him. His efforts to try are his efforts are strong, but he just can't overcome it. I feel deeply sorry for the SoCal alumni because I am from SoCal and for the number one pick in this upcoming draft. There's a reason Jamal Adams left. There's a reason Lev Bell left and Adam Gase might be the worst coach of all time every week I hear something about him getting the Bill O'Brien boot out of New York it's affected me as a person man I used to be optimistic now pessimistic because of the 2020 New York Jets that's a good case I could take that but come on it, remember the Jets and Adam Gase beat the Cowboys last year or, or it was uh, Jason Garrett the horrible coach there but <laughs> come on uh, I will say 
So I did not expect the Cowboys argument out of you, and it had me rolling over here on the right side of the screen. <laughs> Holy smokes. That was Cowboys. a great take. That was hilarious. Dallas Cowboys. You just triggered an entire nation. But we have a question for that entire nation. Are you still them boys? You still them boys? Are you guys still them boys? <laughs> Where them Cowboy fans at? <laughs> hey, you know Cowboy fans where I saw like on TikTok and just social media denouncing their faith and their – I'm no longer, after 12 years, I am no longer a Cowboy fan. No yeah, longer. That's, that's, that's pretty sad. That's how you know right. it's gotten bad. Really? <laughs> I've been through, I'm a Raider fan. I've been yeah. through everything. Trust me, I've been through, Jamarcus <laughs> Russell was my quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't see me out there going, hey, uh, I'm no longer a Raider fan. <laughs> North Turner was our coach for like 10 years. <laughs> and you, got, you see that, that little guy crying? You see him crying? His, yeah. his, his girl's just, like, it's okay. It's okay, mijo. It's okay, mijo. <laughs> Get it out of here. Oh, man. All right, let's, let's keep this going. Let's keep this going. <laughs> Who will win World Series Most Valuable Player? The question is, who will win the World Series MVP? First of all, before I get into this, Joe, of course, we're going to agree that your Los Angeles Dodgers and my Los Angeles Dodgers are winning the World Series this year. But who will win MVP of the series? I'm about to spoil it for you. And everyone else at home might surprise you a little. His name is Cody Bellinger. While Mookie Betts and Corey Seager are great picks for this award, I'm not going to fight you if you pick one of those two too much. I see Cody looking to make an impact on both sides of the ball late in this series, especially. I could see him making a, another big play at the wall. I could see him possibly gunning someone out at home. I already saw him hit a bomb to advance us to this point and saw him hit a bomb in game one. And we can see him take another one for a long ride later on in this series. The Dodgers are relying on Cody to come through in the big moment. And so far, other than in game two, we saw in what the eighth inning, he has done just that. I know Cody, Cody struggled a bit tonight and we're recording this on a Wednesday. So game two was just played, but I fully expect to see some recency bites for this award when he goes off in games four, five, and six. Number 35 didn't have the MVP, MVP season that we saw in 2019, but he will be the World Series MVP, adding to his already loaded resume in his very young career. We are still looking for this World Series, Cody. Get us there, man. Win it this year. Let's go. Yeah, I agree with you. We both, both Dodger fans, we both said Dodgers winning the series. You know, I predicted five games, uh, you know, after the game two loss. I'm a little worried about that. I'll take that. But for MVP, it's going to have to be Mookie Betts. Mookie Betts for sure. No matter what the stats are, no matter what he does from the rest of the series, the national media loves Mookie Betts so much. They're just going to hand it to him. They're just going to give it to him. Uh, you know, in game one, he made himself known. Everybody should know who Mookie Betts was, but if you didn't, you found out who he was. You found out why he was paid, why he, the Dodgers traded him, why the Red Sox were stupid for trading him. And guess what? He got everybody free tacos. Free tacos, right, from Taco Bell. Everybody's getting free tacos because why? Mookie Betts stole a base. He didn't just steal one. He stole two, right? I, would, I personally would love to see Corey Seager take it. He's been un unbelievable in this postseason. But then I could throw another name out there would probably be Kershaw because say the Dodgers win it in five. Say they win it in five and Kershaw goes on the mound in five and he throws another great game. He shuts them down in game five. They win the game five. That's two wins, right? Does he deserve it? But it's nice to dream. It's nice to dream about Corey Seager and Clayton Kershaw, you know, the guys. But it's going to be Mookie Betts. He's going to do it. Just his leadership, the knowledge that he brings – you know, to the team and the, the defensive plays alone, Mookie Bay. And the maturity. You can see the maturity. He reminds me of Russell yeah. Wilson for baseball. It's very impressive, Mookie Betts. Um, yeah. Something that people always say is people overpaid for a player. And a good example is Anthony Davis. If you win the championship, it does not matter the price that you paid for the player because that is the whole point in making the trade happen. If you paid everything for Mookie Betts you traded Cody Kershaw the entire world for Mookie Betts and then we win the World Series next year it was worth it <laughs> if they win the championship this year it doesn't matter what Mookie Betts does 
the rest of his contract. The rest of the 12 years, it does not matter because he brought the championship to L.A., first championship since 1988, if he does that. If he loses, then you start looking at that contract like, oh, oh, <laughs> did you guys overspend on somebody? Maybe that's yeah. why. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, hey, right now, of what Mookie Betts has done this season and in the postseason, he's making the Dodgers look like they got him for a bargain. And for me to say somebody's a bargain at $385 million – I mean, wow. Wow. That's like Patty. If Patty wins them three more Super Bowls in his contract, do you think they're going to say that they paid it too much? I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> I thought I was personally worth a lot of money, but I get paired up with I get paired up with you. So it shows my worth, you know what I mean? Yeah, and like you said, they kind of forced you into this, right? They kind of chained you to me. <laughs> they were like, hey, go, go work with this Charger fan. He doesn't know anything better. He already has bad taste. He'll work with anybody. <sighs> They told you that? <laughs> <laughs> not my words. <laughs> Somebody's words out there, but all right, no, the probably, Ryan Sports my word. All right, the Ryan Sports show. All right, all right. Y'all picked me up just to be a side piece of Joe Morley Sports. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, that's the show. I hope you enjoyed it. Joe, did you have a good time this week losing again? Oh, I just, I just <laughs> apparently you weren't listening to the same arguments I was putting out there. I already took it. Unless the Cowboy fans come at me, which they have no reason. Like, what are they going to do? They're going to try to make me suck like their team? Like, come on. I'm a winner here. Start rooting for the winner. You can root for Joe Morley. If the Cowboys are letting you down, Joe Morley's going to bring you back up. (laughs) That Cowboys roast was an instant classic. All right, guys. We'll see you next week on the show. Just always remember, you never know when you're doing sports debates or sports talk when you're going to have to go to war. What's going on, everybody? I hope you guys like the show. If, whether you're listening to us on the radio or watching us on YouTube, make sure you go and like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, you know, so you never miss miss out on me. You can miss out a little bit on Mike, but never miss out on me, right? And for more daily comment, make sure you, you go and check us out on Instagram at Joe Morley Sports, at Mike on the Mike Pod, and our, our main page at the Ryan Show Sports, right? So you guys never miss out on daily content. Also, make sure you go and vote in the comment section on our YouTube channel of who you think won each and every round. And it's easy because you just put Joe Morley because Mike stands no chance against me because whenever you debate sports, you're going to war. And that's what we do every Friday night. I'm out of here. Thanks for tuning in.